is that person not on board with what it looks like your calling in life is? Or is that person not on board with you kind of being irresponsible, yeah, coming and like going as you please, not having to pay attention to the numbers and treating your career as more of a hobby and less as a, as a career? Today, I am with my good friend Montel Fish. And we are talking about when should Christians get married? How do you know if the person you're talking to is the one? And a couple other things I've learned as someone who's been married for 11 years and also an entrepreneur creative. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Bruce What's going on? This is Bruce Long with KingsDreamENT.com. This channel exists to encourage, empower, inspire you to live out God's dream. This is like our fifth or sixth time starting this video keeps crashing but we're believing that uh the stuff we're going to talk about is going to help some of you guys uh basically my good friend montel fish is in town what's up bro how my you doing how are you bro this is working i'm happy that this is working i'm yes. happy that you're here uh you came and hung out with me today uh yesterday actually last night yeah. and you went to the gym mm -hmm. and i'm force feeding you healthy food that you don't want to eat no, not at all. Montel's in rebellion, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sure. But we had this really cool conversation, man, about marriage, about um, some things you're kind of working through personally that we're going to get into. And I, something that I think you believe that a lot of people are kind of wrestling through, younger believers, um, based on the video you just did on your YouTube channel about um, when will you find your wife, when will God reveal who your wife is. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, instead of just doing another video you've been on my channel multiple times you actually one of the first people to hop on here and do an Neat. interview you and Chaz so I'm grateful for you guys I thought dude let's talk about this this idea of of marriage of being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur the tension that many people face and wanting to pursue their dreams yet yeah. settle down and I just thought it'd be super cool man so mm -hmm. um just kind of tell me where you're at with with this whole thing yeah man um well so I I, I released a video the video is called She Will Come When It's Time. Mm. And basically... Very spiritual. Um, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> super spiritual. No, but um, <laughs> it, was actually, it was actually inspired by something. Well, one, it was like straight, like... I think the whole thing was God mm -hmm. on how it came about. Because I heard my pastor, like, literally just in the middle of Bible study, he was just, like, he just basically encouraged me that she was come when it's time, like... Pastor just be knowing stuff sometimes, mm -hmm. and he just knew that. I I don't know how he knew. If, and he just said that to you. She'll just in the middle like, of oh, Bible study, and and then and then because, yeah, he was just encouraging me that like, I don't need to worry about that stuff. Right. Um. But at the same time, I was going through, and still, I'm kind of working some things out with special person and special I, somebody. Yeah, but just trying to figure out like, okay, um, what is God's voice and all this thing? Like, what is he saying? Like. Even one, even the things on like, will God say that this person is a one, or will you kind of just figure it out? Like everyone usually has a different story on it, and mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to be like, this is the exact way God's gonna do it, mm -hmm. which can be like, oh, okay, God. But yeah, so we talked about that last night, and mm -hmm. I think it could benefit some people if we chat about it today. So yeah, I mean, let's let's talk about uh, a few things that Scripture says, right? Yeah. Because I think that's that's important. There. Those those of us that are in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, we hold the Bible as, as as the final authority over mm -hmm. human conduct and yes. good decisions and bad decisions and those Definitely. things. Ways you can honor God, ways you can sin against God, and mm -hmm. uh, Scripture. In the beginning, says that man, it is not good for man to be alone, mm -hmm. right? That God created Adam and then he created Eve because it wasn't good for man to be alone. So one, uh, I think that's, that's important, that we are designed to not be alone. We're designed to be in community. We're designed to um, be fruitful and mm -hmm. multiply, right? Right, right. Um, and how literal some people want to take it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some people was like, yo, I want four kids. I want, some, my pastor <laughs> has seven kids, you know? Uh, and so, and then there's also, um, there's a lot in there about, about marriage and, you know, how to, you know, uh, Proverbs 31, having a, a wife that is of noble character. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's some stuff in the New Testament where Jesus obviously is, you know, encourages people to get married. Right. But then there's Paul in the New Testament and one of the verses in Corinthians, I think it's in Corinthians, Paul says, you know, 
Um, if yes. you're burning with lust, get married. Mm -hmm. But I wish that you guys would all be like me, <laughs> yeah. right? Because then that way you First can kind of focus. Seven. It's like Corinthians 7, yeah. yeah uh, you kind of so. focus your, you can give all yourself to God, right? Yeah. And the question on who Paul was, whether he was married or not married, the question on was he widowed, there's a lot of debate amongst that in terms of scholars. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest things I think many people end up missing when reading scripture is the cultural context of what was going on, True. right? Very so true. what's happening in terms of Christians being persecuted under the Roman Empire, true. right? In terms of a lot of folks being martyred at that time. Mm -hmm. So we have to factor in what's the social tension of being a Christian. Hmm. And are they, are, why would he tell them not to get married or like, I wish you would remain like me because you can get, it. well, when you get married, you, your life gets complicated. You gain responsibility, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so I think from a, from a cultural social standpoint, I think what he was saying was not just on some like, yo, uh, don't get married because that's the ideal thing to serve God. Mm -hmm. I think he's actually saying, hey, under this current climate, hmm. it's probably not a good idea because someone might get martyred. You're going to have to be a single parent. It's going to be messy. You yeah. know? Um, I'm not saying that's, that's what he's saying. I'm saying that's what I think he may have been meaning by that passage because yeah. I don't want to infer my opinion on Scripture. Mm -hmm. um, and so all in all, man, I think marriage is a beautiful thing. Right. I think the tension that a lot of people are facing is when. When, when to get married? How yeah. does that look? No, for sure. You know, um, you are, how old are you? I'm 22. 22. Yeah. So I was 23 when I got married. Man, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'll be 35 next month, New Year's Eve. Uh, I don't have my, my birthday anywhere public, and I don't, like, I don't like the random, like, shout outs on the birthday. <laughs> you know, Facebook reminders, right? Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. But I'll, I'll be 35 this year, uh, New Year's Eve, and um, mm -hmm. I've been married 23, so it'll be 12 years this July. Man, yeah, that's amazing. yeah, and I definitely didn't do it right, go quote unquote right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, we we we'll were get to the good stuff. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we were. I, I was 19. My wife was 17 when we met. Okay. We dated for four years. I mean, we did it right in the sense that like we didn't have sexual intercourse. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's probably the only thing right that we did, <laughs> you know, or the, the right thing, the only right thing that I did. Right. Uh, but we got married young. I. I uh, was not financially independent. Mm -hmm. I was not responsible. Mm -hmm. I was not making money. I was not, I was just not in, a, in the best spot. Mm -hmm. I knew that I didn't want to burn with lust, yeah. like Paul said. <laughs> and I knew that she was my wife. I knew that my wife was my wife from the very first real conversation we had. Wow. Um, I, one of the few times I feel like God spoke to me and was like, this is your wife. Or maybe it might have just been me. You know what I'm saying? We met at a Starbucks. Neither one of us drank coffee at the time. You know what I'm saying? And I remember that first conversation and like, yo, this, this, is, this is my wife. This is the one, you know? Dang. And so we were young and we made a lot of, in terms of the way we got married, like I ended up living uh, the first nine months. I had a condo with my mom that I co-signed for, that I shouldn't have co-signed for. And we ended mm. up living in the top story of that condo. Oh, my. Um, horrible, horrible decision. Jeez, yeah. Uh, and then we finally moved out about 11 months into our marriage, 10 months into our marriage, we finally oh, moved out. And I remember people asking me, like, how are you going to provide for your wife? How are you going to do these things? You know, and I was, like, still in college yeah. and trying to do music. And this is before the Internet really took over. This is 2008 is when I got married. Wow, yeah. And, um, yeah, man, and it was rough. Like, it was, <laughs> it was rough. Uh, but what marriage did for me is that joint definitely grew me up like huh. it forced me to man up uh -huh. it forced me to be responsible it forced me to figure out how to hustle and make more money yeah it, and then fatherhood just amplified that even more man and so the very thing that i thought uh was going to slow me down on mm. my dreams is the thing that actually empowered me to go after my dreams which was my wife wow. marriage not that my wife i didn't think my wife was going to slow me down i thought the idea of marriage being this responsibility thing that you got to die to your desires, which you do in a yeah. lot of ways. But it was the very thing that propelled me to become full-time. And my wife was the one who told me to quit my job. Wow. And she was a stay-at-home mom. And my wife has always just believed and had faith in me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so, yeah, man, that's kind of like, in a nutshell, my experience. And yeah, well, that's interesting because it's like, okay, so you have the situation. Mm -hmm. Let's say two people don't agree. Let's say mm -hmm. 
you're like hypothetical hypothetically of course <laughs> <laughs> but let's say these people don't agree uh-huh. and one's like yeah i'm gonna be full-time artist i'm just gonna go for mm-hmm. it like mm-hmm. send it yeah. and the other person is like let's get realistic it's not really making that much money mm-hmm. maybe you should do this for now until like things start happening more mm-hmm. and then it's like there's obviously that tension because you're just like dang my passion is burning inside of me and i want to go do this thing yeah. that I feel like God's called me to do. Right, right, right. Another person is just like realistic. Um, and then there's the aspect of Abraham and, and Sarah mm-hmm. when God gave Abraham the promise, right, of, uh, of Isaac mm-hmm. and how old that they would have them. Mm-hmm. And Abraham, to my understanding, was pretty down. Mm-hmm. Like he, he trusted God and, yeah. and Sarah laughed and she didn't think it was possible at all. Mm-hmm. So there was like that, but mm-hmm. obviously they still got along. But your case is kind of just like... Mm-hmm. A blessing in the sense of your wife is just fully supporting. So, mm-hmm. it's what do you think? What do you think about that when two people necessarily don't agree? Hmm. And do you think that the man should do what he feels like God is calling him to do anyway, or he should some way lay down what he feels like he should do to yeah. to a sense lay down your life for the woman? Yeah. But how far does that go? Yeah, it's a that's lot. a great question. I've seen and I've done all the above. I've had a job. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, it's not like I got married and went full time with music. Like, oh, word, okay. I worked. You know what I'm saying? I, I've, I've, I went full time in 2015. So up until 2015, I worked a job. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Shoot. And so I think I think it's both. I think I think it's both. There's a proverb that says um, those who I just did a video on this on TikTok. Uh, those who tend to their land will always have abundance of food but those who chase fantasies are foolish Mm. i might be i might be paraphrasing i'll I'll look that up and that was the verse that really snapped me into place in terms of like do i want to do music as a career or do i not Mm. you know what i'm saying because if i do then my behavior and the way I approach music has to be approached like a business. Yeah. It can be approached like some willy-nilly hobby hmm. where I'm kind of doing it, but I'm kind of not doing it, yeah. and I'm not really paying attention to the numbers because I'm not a numbers guy. I'm a creative after all. I'm an artist, right? Dang. These are all the things yeah. I told myself. For sure. And I hearing that verse, this was, we got married in 2008, and we had a ton of debt, student yeah. loan debt, car debt, yeah. credit card debt. And in the process, we started... Uh, we discovered Crown Financial at our church. That didn't really do much, a whole lot for us. And then we did, we did discover Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University. Hmm. And so we ended up going on this journey to pay off all of our debt, which is about $45,000 of debt wow. in 18 months. But best Sheesh. decision we could have ever made. Yeah, that's and so not only did that teach me financial literacy, that teach me about entrepreneurship. I read his book on entrepreneurship and I would listen mm-hmm. to his podcast every day. Mm-hmm. And he read that verse. He read that verse on, on, his, uh, on his radio show. Hmm. And I remember it was like 2010, we were right in the middle of the debt-free journey and I was like, I really had to soberly ask myself, like, am I a creative entrepreneur or is this a fantasy? Hmm. Because if I'm an entrepreneur, I have to approach this as an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, entrepreneur yeah. And That's that right. was the really kind of the beginning, 2010. I had made a little bit of money off of music before then, but that was really when I was like, all right, well, what are the revenue streams? Mm. Where can I make money? Okay, I know I have to do shows. I know I have to do uh, merch. I know I have to do features. Mm-hmm. I know I have to do, right? I have to, about, uh, and I discovered sync licensing, which me and you have talked about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I talk about it on this channel a lot. Shout out to Musicbed. And so once I discovered the revenue streams, then I just had to implement them. So there was this weird situation that happened. Uh, so I told you earlier, I co signed on a condo with my mom, yeah. right? Yeah. Terrible decision. Mm-hmm. Um, everything about that was just not swat, not wise on my part. And yeah. unfortunately I was the one that kind of like pursued it. Long story short, I co-signed on a condo. The condo, I had moved out, we got married, moved out. Mm. Um, condo goes into foreclosure. Mm. The foreclosure, HOA fees were like $1,500 that she didn't pay for like a year that she stayed there in HOA fees. Damn. Those were attached to my credit. So, the, so, so, so in the process of getting debt free, I end up getting sued but they had my name misspelled and they didn't have my social. So I kind of brushed it off. For, it was $1,500 in HOA fees. Yeah. That $1,500 turned into $5,000 with all the court fees and all the adjustments. Oh and we wake up one day and our accounts are levied, which means that we had just paid rent, thankfully. Mm. So this is like, we're, we're, like I'm in college, we're working 
crap jobs. Man. And my wife is off to work and she, she calls me and she's like, hey, all the money out of our account is gone. And I was like, what do you mean? Oh my God. And so I looked and like everything was gone. Thankfully, we just paid rent. And that was like, we were like baby step one. We had just paid off $1,000. Yeah. I'm sorry, we had just saved $1,000 mm. and we had a couple credit cards we had knocked out. So I was mm. like, yo, what, are, what am I gonna do? Right. And I was really like considering bankruptcy Mm. Because in, in the process of figuring this out, I discovered that second mortgage that I told you about. That second yeah. mortgage was $60,000 that I was liable <laughs> Jeez, for. You bro. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because the first mortgage in a foreclosure, you're not liable for. The second mortgage, you are liable for. So that's mm. the second mortgage that we had to, I had to pay for that. So yeah. long story short, I ended up doing a feature sale. For the first time ever, I did a feature sale because I knew one of the revenue streams as an artist was oh. doing a feature sale. All right. And I threw it up on like Twitter at the time. This is... 2011, something somewhere in that ballpark, 2010, 2011, did a feature sale. And bro, within a week, I had made like $3,500 off of wow. features. Jeez. Anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to mm. like, I don't know, I think the most I got at the time was like 600 or 700 for two verses. Huh. And I made like 3,500 bucks in a week. Wow. So that thing that was a curse, that thing that was a poor decision that then I had to pay for the consequence of, ended up turning into one of the best things ever because it reinforced in me that no i can go out here and get it i yeah. can make money off of my art i can huh. do it you know wow, what i mean yeah. and i never seen that much money from music in such a short period of time right you know what i mean and so then that got my wheels spinning and i started thinking about other revenue streams and hmm. uh that sixty thousand dollar debt we ended up i ended up just listening to dave ramsey was mm -hmm. bold called him and was like hey like i got a thousand dollars for you guys Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they were like, what? And I was like, yep, I got $1,000 for you. You know what I'm saying? Word. And uh, take it or leave it. You know what I'm Man. saying? And they took it. And yeah. so I settled the $60,000 debt for $1,000 that that's I thought amazing. I was going to have to file for bankruptcy. So I say all that to say, so now imagine being a creative, mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, and then you experience something like that. Right. Right? And you're like, I could do anything. Right, you yeah. really didn't it's start awesome. believing that you can do anything. <laughs> Legit, and, yeah. that, and that is what happened, bro. It's like that set me on a course to believe I can make more money, to believe I can quit my job, to believe I can find other revenue streams, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and I wish I would have learned some of this before mm -hmm. I, was, I was married. Yeah. But, man, sometimes life is the best teacher. Yeah, you, you know gotta, what I'm saying? You just, just got to jump go in. Go through you it, know what yeah. I'm saying? So no, that's to, real. So to answer your question, um, two people aren't on board, right? Yeah. And I, what I had pushed back to you is I said, are, is that person not on board with what it looks like your calling in life is? Or is that person not on board with you kind of being irresponsible, yeah, coming and going as you please, not having to pay attention to the numbers and treating your career as more of a hobby and less as a, as a, as a career. No, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, that's the deeper question because if, some, if you believe God's called you to do music mm -hmm. and to travel and to, you know, whatever, <clears throat> to, to travel to some degree and to be an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. And that person's not with that. Mm -hmm. That's different than that person saying, hey, you might want to get a part-time job so that you could have more stable income. Type stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or, hey, are you sure you could only make X amount because this person over here is making this much? You know what I'm saying? And right. that's when I was like, yo, look, bro, I have half the subscribers you do. Right. And this is what I make. And I started kind of flexing a little bit. True. You know what I'm saying? True. And I started showing you some numbers. Like, here are some real numbers of some real money that you could be making because you're independent, you own your masters, mm -hmm. you have an audience that cares about you and your depth, mm -hmm. and you could actually go out here and make a comfortable living. You could clear six figures, you know right. what I'm saying? Pay taxes on that and still take home, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 a year and yeah. live wherever wow. you want and, and enjoy the life you want to enjoy and be able to give to your church and save and have a baby and all these things, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm from Atlanta, you throw me the ball and I scoop in the zone. They hit me up for a deal like it's something I do on the phone. Just cause it's me in the studio, don't mean I do it alone. Holy, oh, 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 holy, oh,